So hip pain, probably one of the more common presenting complaints that a physiotherapist or a chiropractor will see. Hip pain tends to be on one side of the body, in the hip area, the low back area, into the groin on occasion, sometimes travels down the leg into your knee. It can affect any age group, but more commonly in the older person. It can be a sudden pain or an ongoing persistent pain. So these are the common traits you see someone with a hip problem. Now, not all hip problems are serious, but I'm talking about the six indicators of serious hip pain, and we're gonna go through all the questions and answers at the end for you guys. So what causes hip pain? Well, we know what a hip joint is. It's a mobile joint, which is capable of taking huge stress and loads over the course of your lifetime. But as you get older, you tend to do less exercise, you're less mobile, you tend to put on a little bit more weight, and unfortunately what causes the muscles around the hip joint tend to decondition and weaken, which causes instability in the joint, which causes this hip pain. Over time, this hip pain will turn into what's called wear and tear or osteoarthritis because of the lack of stability in the joint. If you get hip pain, you tend to do less exercise. The less exercise causes deconditioning of the muscles and then lead on to the pain in your hip. So it's a vicious circle that's hard to get out of sometimes. That's what we're going to discuss and give you the information to break that vicious circle at the end of this video. So we now know what causes hip pain, but there are six indicators that tells you if your hip is a serious issue that you need to do something about. So the first indicator is groin pain. Groin pain is a common presenting complaint for people who suffer with hip problems. Remember, the hip sits behind the groin, an inflamed hip joint, restricted hip joint causes pain into the groin. That's number one, groin pain. Number two is when the inflamed hip refers down the thigh into the front of the knee. That's another common presenting complaint for someone who's got a hip problem. Number three, the patient will always have a limp or often associated with a limp. You stand up from a chair, you're limp, the limp doesn't tend to go away. That's another indication the problem is in your hip. Decreased range of motion of the joint, you know yourself through your normal activities during the day, restriction in the groin, restriction in the hip movement, leg movement, another big indicator. The fifth reason is your pain gets worse on movement and decreases on rest. That's a really common thing you'll see with someone who's got severe hip osteoarthritis or wear and tear. And the sixth reason is you'll see stuff like your activities of daily living, tying your laces, washing your feet, putting your socks on, that becomes a battle, you can't get down to do it. And they're the six indicators. If I had either one of them, I would actually go and get my hip checked out and checked further. So we know what causes hip pain, we know the indicators, we need to tell you exactly now what you can do about it. So what do you do next? How do you start treating and getting rid of your hip pain? Well, I'm gonna break it down to you in three simple points. You have three things to do to get rid of your hip pain. Number one is move the joint. Number two is stretch the muscles of the joint. And number three is strengthen the muscles of the joint. And this is actually really, really simple. One, by moving the hip joint in different ranges of movement, you increase the blood flow that decreases inflammation, brings lubrication, nutrition to the joint to keep the joint healthy and reduce your pain and stiffness. Number two, by using the muscles and ligaments around the joint, by stretching them on a, on a regular basis, you'll increase the flexibility and take the strain and improve the mobility of the joint. And the third thing, by strengthening the joint, you'll increase the stability of the joint and stop it getting worse and getting more problematic down the line. So a combination of movement exercises, stretching exercises, and strength exercises is how you get rid of hip pain. Add in walking, maybe cycling, swimming with the exercise has been shown to get rid of hip problems and reduce pain and stop it getting worse so you don't have to go down the line of injections and surgery. Even last week, I had a chap who's had hip pain uh, for about, about eight or nine years and we put him through the guided movement exercises the stretch exercise and the strength exercise and in two weeks he's dropped his hip pain by 50 percent and now it's not 100 percent but he's definitely reduced his pain by 50 percent you too can self-manage and stop getting your hip problems getting worse so guys that's it for the moment if you like what we're doing here please subscribe to our youtube channel ipainkit.com for this particular problem our hip pain kit is one that we recommend we'll put a video out every week so we'll probably chat again soon Thanks, guys.